So I'd like to invite our next speaker who will be joining us virtually. She hails from the University of Pittsburgh and is the Professor of Environmental and Occupational Health and is the Dean of the School of Public Health, Dr. Maureen Litchfield. Good morning. I'm uh, honored um, to be with you um, to talk a bit about um, something that's new for the state and hopefully will contribute to the region um, in a demonstrable way uh, now and in the future. Um, that's the Pennsylvania One Health Consortium. It's really a transdisciplinary collaborative protecting people, animals, plant, and the environment. And so um, the University of Pittsburgh has been waiting for this opportunity, uh, and I'm delighted to be one of you. Next, please. Um, so a, a bit about, you, you know why we have One Health um, and why we're addressing One Health. But for, from a public health perspective, these are really the four drivers um, that worry us. Um, of people living closer together, um, of um, factors moving closer to us, of us traveling more. Um, and um, we know that animals are not only for food, and I'm hoping um, that increasingly it would be less and less. So next, please. So the One Health uh, Task Force um, that preceded the consortium um, has been in place for a very long time. And I really should um, recognize um, all the members of the One Health Task Force who are um, either joining in person or online. I see Dana and Judy and Reg and uh, um, Jennifer and so many others um, and Erica. So thank you for being uh, in front of us with addressing these issues. So it started really with the animal and Diagnostic Commission uh, in 1988. Um, back then, the major concern was um, about animal disease, about laboratory diagnostics, and to support the veterinary school. Um, it, there was a concern about how to have sufficient research funds. Um, and in 2014, then, um, this commission was reorganized in what was until recently the One Health Task Force, with the initial goal to develop representation from human, animal, um, and environment from all those fields. The mission of the One Health Task Force was to bring professional stakeholders together um, in multiple ways to share knowledge um, and address the issues that um, are close to our heart from a One Health perspective. Next, please. In 2024, then, the Pennsylvania One Health Consortium was formed with the goal to serve as a transdisciplinary research um, of One Health research, education, policy, and community engagement. And of all the things that are critical to us, community engagement is really what centers us. Okay, so the Pennsylvania um, One Health Consortium has an organizational structure and the University of Pittsburgh has um, put in some seed funds um, for the first three years. And that organizational structure, as I mentioned before, has, um, is, has four foci, um, research, education, community engagement, and policy. Um, on the research angle, we, and actually including both education, all, all the four fields actually, research, education, community engagement and policy. I'd like to say how quickly we got organized um, because we recently submitted, and I wanna thank all my colleagues who participated in that submission, um, a proposal to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention to develop a, or to create a regional um, center for disaster preparedness and response. And so we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how that goes. But um, if we did not have the connection through this consortium and obviously through the foundation that the One Health um, Task Force provided, we would not have been able to submit um, that quality proposal so quickly. So thank you. So in terms of organization, we're coordinating these, we will serve as the School of Public Health at Pitt will be serving as the coordinating body 
um, informed and advised and guided by uh, both an external advisory committee as well as an internal steering committee. So we're serious um, about making sure that everyone can contribute and everyone um, is able to collaborate across disciplines and across the four areas. Next, please. When the world uh, had uh, reached 8 billion in terms of the number of people um, that live on, on our planet, um, I was asked what the four things are that keep me up at night. And I shared with them that infectious disease, extreme heat, food and water security, and poor quality keep me up at night, not only for human health, but definitely also for animal health. Um, I couldn't think about a better one health focus and one health topic um, than uh, a, a, you know, related to these four areas. Next, please. Now, there's a lot of H5N1 um, topics in the news, but look at the number of um, areas and states affected um, and of people affected overall. And these are CDC, CDC data. And so this is something that affects us all and that requires us all to be engaged. Next, please. Now, if you look at the map and the data are, data are always so far behind um, what, um, what the reality is, but these are the most recent data that we've been able to gather. And if you look at the, the states and the counties affected, um, you can look at where you live and see where we are. And it is, uh, it just brings home um, the importance of us working together. Next, please. Now we've also been dealing with, um, and it, our region and the One Health um, Consortium has been so involved in increasing this. And I really want to get a shout out to Dr. Alex Hamburg, who um, shared very detailed information with us at our last, um, consortium meeting about uh, the highly pathogenic avian influenza and the situation in cattle. When I was asked a couple of weeks ago um, at a radio interview, um, not necessarily about the health of the cow, but um, I was asked some a very simple question that required a complicated answer or that you could answer with a, a, a in a simple way too. And the question was, should kids drink milk? I share that question. And of course my answer was yes. I share that question because of the burden that we currently have in public health dealing with misinformation and anti-science. I share that question um, because there are a high number of people who despite us sharing that pasteur pasteurized milk is the best way to go, will not boil their raw milk and drive to states and counties to obtain it. And so through the lens of public health, I share with you what really is in a way a new epidemic for us start starting with COVID of misinformation and anti-science, perhaps more daunting than any other infectious disease epidemic. I also continue to worry, although Pennsylvania uh, is not reporting any, any cases, and I know that there have been over 1,600 tests done in our state, that there might still be some hidden cases that we don't know about, but this is currently um, how the map looks like. Next, please. And so, here are some of the messages that we're hoping um, will take hold in our community speaking about um, issues of, of anti-science. And I hope that you will join me in conveying those messages as well. Next, please. But true to the One Health principle, it's not only protecting humans, it's protecting our herd and the things that we could do at each stage of it's like clinical control points in environmental health at each stage of, of, of production. And so whether we address farm activities uh, in terms of animal introduction, next please. 
or in turn of in terms of, in terms of uh, making sure our equipment is safe and handled in a uh, environmentally sound way. Uh, next, please. Addressing cattle health, um, I, there are many veterinarians and veterinary colleagues um, on uh, perhaps in the room, but definitely online. Um, and that's a science that um, has too long been separated from public health. I'm very pleased to see that the public health veterinarians is a going, growing group of colleagues um, that are joining us and addressing those uh, issues. And then next and very close to my heart, next slide please, is addressing worker issues. From an occupational health perspective, we couldn't have a bigger challenge than protecting workers. And so I'm hoping that each of you will join in a transdisciplinary way um, to address this issue. Next, please. And so um, you know that uh, Pennsylvania has a number of challenges and this is one of our greatest challenges in terms of Lyme disease. We either are number one or number two um, in the nation when it comes to uh, Lyme disease. That is particularly um, an issue that we need to address together. We are all dealing with heat waves. Um, this morning I walked to the office and I could have put on shorts because of how hot it was. Uh, next, please. But what the important issue is that it, extreme heat linked to climate change, we don't need more science there, um, affects people as well as cattle and the environment. Next, please. And so I want to take you to the science pieces of what we're addressing. And so here you see the interaction and the interconnectedness of environmental health, one health, climate change, um, interacting with um, human health and animal health. And so as we address One Health issues, we can't address One Health issues in isolation, but yet in an interconnected fashion. And that is what will advance One Health as a science, One Health as a practice, and One Health as a community engagement, and particularly also a policy issue. Next, please. And so if you look at One Health through three lenses, the lens of science, the lens of practice and the lens of policy. Um, from science to policy, it is about application and translation. Uh, and often policy is lagging behind where the science is leading. From science to practice is about risk reduction so that we use evidence-based practices, but it's also about gap, gap analysis upstream from practice to science. And, um, finally, from practice to policy, it's about implementation and monitoring so that policies make sense on the front line. Next, please. So I want to leave you with an area of science, uh, implementation science, that anchors community engagement into all we do. It is a collaborative way to not only design, to implement, um, but also to evaluate, and I'm hoping with um, all the members of the One Health Consortium and many who are not part of the One Health Consortium, I encourage you to, to join us. Um, we can do so. And I leave you uh, my last slide um, with a thank you and some uh, pictures of the country where I come from, where I just took students with me um, to see the impact of climate and health. Thank you all.